In this video, I will be demonstrating some of the basic features the PTS-1 and Precise Power software offers, including timers, compact view, power utilization, default settings and more. First, you will want to install Precise Power as well as the USB drivers. Next, you will want to connect the PTS-1 via the included USB cable and power on the device. A splash screen will load that automatically connects to the PTS-1 and checks to make sure everything is working properly. Now that we are on the main screen, let's get started. In the upper left hand corner, you can set the power output of your generator. Directly below the power level is the microwave on and off buttons. We will turn the power on, directly to the right of these buttons. We will see the actual amount of RF being produced by the PTS-1 and how much is being reflected to the generator. Below these buttons we have our frequency control. If in a sweeping mode, you will have a start and stop frequency, if in single frequency mode the stop frequency will become grayed out. These parameters can also be set using the vertical and horizontal cursors located on the graph. This can be done in real time without turning the power off. There are also small up and down arrows located next to the input boxes, the directly below our frequency control box, we have the five main modes of operation for the PTS-1. Single frequency, plasma, basic sweep bend map and analyze load. Directly below these buttons we find the status LEDs which show the state of the unit. Next we will demonstrate how to deal with a fault. The PTS-1 has several built-in microprocessors, these help to monitor the state of the system at all times to help protect itself and the user. In this example, the system has detected that someone pushed an emergency stop button which can be hardwired into the back of the generator. The system immediately shut off the output and alerted the user as well as illuminating the correct status LEDs. The front panel fault LED on the hardware is also illuminated. At this point, the user has to correct the problem and either clear the fault to proceed, or exit the program. Microwaves cannot be turned back on until this has happened. Once cleared, the system returns to normal operation. Below the status LEDs we will see the temperature sensors. These monitor to make sure the ambient air or cooling water as well as the transistors, do not get too hot and get damaged. Across the entire bottom of the graph, you will see grayed out buttons, that are only available in band map mode. See the band map video for more details. The bottom right side of the screen we have a graph legend, which describes what each colored line on the graph represents. Directly above it, is the band map table, again this is only applicable for band map mode. Next, in the upper right hand corner of the screen you can find the version of precise power you are running. Next you will find the input source button, this allows you to use the PTS-1 as a linear amplifier. Next you have the modulation button which allows for PWM operation. Next we have the power control buttons, in adaptive mode the power is rolled back when operating with high reflected energy. Following that is the phase control button, which allows you to change the phase of your output by 360 degrees, in 1.4 degree steps. Next we have the timer. The timer simply counts down until it hits zero, when it does RF is turned off, like your home microwave. Next, I will be talking about the compact screen. Compact screen is a smaller, condensed control panel that replaces the main user display. This can be useful when it is desired to run other Windows programs or additional instances of precise power on the same computer. Most of the options are not accessible from this compact screen. Click on Normal View to restore the full user window. You can also make the compact screen always visible by clicking on Options, always on top. Now I am going to discuss the Startup Options screen. This section of the Options menu permits the user to choose initial values for various system settings on Power Up. These values are stored in non-volatile memory and can be thought of as your system's default settings. This is useful if you are repeating the same test on different days, so you don't need to re-enter the same parameters. You also use this screen to switch units such as Celsius to Fahrenheit. Lastly, I will be discussing the power utilization menu. First we have an on-time counter that will continue to accrue time as long as the generator's RF is turned on. Next we have power usage. This lists the total amount of RF and line power your system has used in kilowatt hours. On the bottom the system's RF efficiency and line efficiency are given. I hope you have enjoyed this demo. Precise Power is a feature-rich program that becomes a very powerful tool when paired with solid-state RF generators. Thanks for watching. Please contact us for more information.